Y'all laugh. <laughs> you, I mean, I'm just kidding. I don't think it'll go 75, but close. Um, but it's called a picture of health, and it's because we believe in living life with a healthy heart, having a healthy home, and living at a healthy pace. And uh, so I want you to get ready for today's message. The notes may not be in the app this week, but there will be things on the screen. So get your phone out. Get ready to take some notes as we continue our series, Picture of Health. Hi guys. Hi guys! My name is Sarah and I've been going to the bridge for about four and a half years. My name's Colton, I've been going to the bridge for about six years. And we're the Davidsons! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the bridge is important to us because I met Sarah on a missions trip to Ireland. The bridge sent a team over to help out with a youth camp, a week-long youth camp. And while I was there, Sarah was there. And that's how we met and we got married soon, about a year later and when we moved back here from Oregon, uh, this was pretty much the first place that we came back to. We really love the bridge. We It just feels like such a community and every time we walk in it just feels like family from day one. Especially moving across country, it just feels like so scary and like you don't really know what to expect and being able to walk in somewhere and just immediately finding friends that are family that it just, I'm so thankful that we moved when we did. I love the bridge, again, like the community. Uh, I knew like one or two people when I first came here and I think they're both gone now, but uh, we've made lots of new friends since here, playing basketball, playing different board games, coming in for community, coming in for fellowship, renewal every Sunday. It's, it's always a good time to make sure to get, not only just connect with our friends, but get, connecting on the spiritual level that we really need. Thank you guys for making, a, making this church feel like home and making us feel like we belong to a community. Okay, bye! Bye, bye, bye. If you don't know Colton and Sarah, do your life a favor. Get to know them. They are a blast. Uh, they, do, they do things like have fun and stuff. <laughs> and so we want you to get to know them. Uh, today, it truly is an honor to have my friends James and Holly Brown with us. Uh, James and I had the privilege of serving together. Uh, I was at a church in Texas. Many of you may or may not know. I was at a church in Texas called Gateway Church. And uh, James and I served on a team together there and uh, got to know him. Before I was on staff there, James and I became good buddies. Um, he's, a, he's more of a brother to me than a friend at this point in our lives. We were talking last night. He, 12 years we've been friends now, and uh, I love James so very much. And what's great is his wife's even cooler. Um, Holly is an amazing woman of God. She's deep. And if you're coming tonight, you're going to get to hear from Holly, and I promise you, she will speak into your soul, and it'll be good for you. Um, James, I wouldn't be standing right here today, and I know you know I mean this because I'm about to cry. I wouldn't be right here today if I didn't, hadn't met you. Uh, you encouraged me. You encourage me often. Each time we get together, I leave happier, more full of joy, and better. I'm just a better dude because of you. So thank you for coming and being a part of this weekend with us. So if you would, would you please help me in honoring and welcoming my friend, James Brown. Hey guys, there we go. I am so honored to be here, so excited. To be in this house, I want to just take a second and just honor your pastor who, as he said, we are brothers. We've had an opportunity to, to do something that I think is something that is God-given. When, when the Lord intrinsically connects your heart to somebody and then you get to go through life and maybe there's seasons where you don't get to connect as often, but when you do, you pick up right where you left off. Isn't that powerful? And that's what Brian is to me. And I'm so thankful that I can pick up the phone and go, you're, you're just never going to believe the crazy stuff I'm going through. And he'll go, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, let me tell you. And he'll just speak wisdom into it. He'll speak prophetic words into my life, into my family, into the ministry that I get to be a part of. And so I am so honored to serve, be here with you today. It is a gift. I'm so thankful. 
And I just want to tell you, I just sense this as we were in worship. First of all, let me just tell you the, the manifest presence of God is in this place. As worship was lifted up, the presence of God, he loves to be here in this place. And I could sense him just moving and speaking and doing a work that is so beyond business as usual. Amen. And I'm, let me just tell you, I just believe this. The name of this church, the bridge, is a prophetic word. That this church, this house, is situated where it is in the city because God has made it to be a bridge to the lost and broken and dying world. And let me tell you something right now. It is not by accident that you're sitting right in the center of what's around this building and this place. Because I believe that God is stirring and he's shaking. And I just kept hearing my spirit, Brian, the word epicenter. When there's an earthquake, there's an epicenter. And the epicenter is where it's the most violent shaking. And there is a, a move that goes out from there that where there is a, a obvious and evident change that came from that shaking. Ooh, I believe that's a word for you today. There is going to be an obvious and evident change that comes from the shaking that God does in this house at the bridge, Oklahoma City, Bricktown. Amen? Amen? Come on. Listen, I'm telling you. Thank you. If this was a golf game, that'd be appropriate. But I'm talking about, I'm talking about the word of the Lord. Amen? Come on. Somebody give God some praise for what he's doing at Bricktown. And so I want you to understand that you are a bridge. God has set you and fashioned you to be a bridge to a world that is hurting, a world that is confused, a world where people are, are struggling to understand identity. They're struggling to understand how they can be safe and successful and make it through the craziness that is this world. And so I have a word in my heart for you, and I'm going to continue. I want to build upon what Pastor Brian talked about last week, where he talked about how the, the, the saying here is healthy heart, healthy home, healthy pace. I love that because those three, those three phrases put together have a very holistic effect, don't they? Healthy heart, healthy home, healthy pace. And there's a through line that I think is something, if we grab hold of it, should change the way we approach our faith, our relationships, our purpose, our calling, and that's the word healthy. Healthy, healthy heart, healthy home, healthy pace. I believe that the Holy Spirit is bringing back to his church health. Amen? Amen. And so I want to continue on this concept of, of health. Last week, Pastor Brian talked about having a healthy heart, and it requires diet, right? Being in the word, exercise, activating your faith, and it requires community. And this week, I get to talk about having a healthy home. And let me just tell you, for me, a healthy home is incredibly valuable. As Pastor Brian pointed out, I want to honor my beautiful, amazing best friend in the whole wide world, my wife of almost 21 years, Holly, who's right here with me. We have three children. They range in age uh, from almost 20, so 19, 16, and 14 are our kids' age. Girl, girl, boy. We're so grateful for the life that God has given us together. We get to do ministry together. My wife is a, uh, an anointed and powerful and gifted worship leader at our church. Um, and she has so much wisdom inside of her. And I just, I love that I get to do life with my best friend. I'm so grateful. We have, our, our kids are plugged in and doing ministry. And so we've just seen God's hand of blessing on our home. And I have to tell you that that wasn't how I grew up. Having a healthy home, I, I don't think I would have defined the home that I grew up in as healthy. I think that if I were to define the home that I grew up in, I might use words like dysfunctional or broken or challenged. Uh, I've never met my biological father ever to this day. He's still living somewhere. I don't know. He doesn't want to know me. He's never had any interest in knowing me. And so I grew up in a, in a home where the, the, until I was you know, middle of my, my childhood, I didn't even realize the man that was in my home raising me wasn't my biological father. But he was, a, he was a good father. He was present and he was there. But there was so much challenge around the dynamic of my home. Uh, 10 years ago, 11 years ago now, my brother passed away of a drug overdose. That's, that, was, that was all the way tied back to our home and how tumultuous our home was. 
And so I tell you that whenever it became time for me to step into building a home of my own, I made, I made a, a promise to myself and to the Lord, my home, with your help, will be healthy. I will not be a home that is infiltrated by divorce and disconnection and brokenness and fear and insecurity. That will not be my home. And let me tell you, at almost 21 years of building that home, it has not been easy. It has not come without challenge. It has not come without the valleys that are a part of normal life. But let me tell you, by the grace of God, I get to live and do life with literally my best friend in the whole world. And you know what? We fight sometimes. And we fight so good. <laughs> we are so good. And I, 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 I mean, you'll hear a little bit. If you're coming tonight, you'll hear a little bit about it. We really do. We fight good. You know why? Because we don't fight with each other. We fight for each other. And so a healthy home is something that is so, so important to me. And I want to I just kind of walk through what it means to have a healthy home. I was thinking about this even as I was praying this morning. We think about the concept of home and we kind of just picture, I know I do, I just kind of picture my, where I live, my dwelling place, right? And that's home. But I really think there's something more to home that if we really get inside of it, we start to realize that it's this nucleic thing that God has created that is really atomic in its nature. If you look at the nature of family and home and life, there is a cellular quality to it. That whenever it's healthy and it's working the way it should, a healthy division happens and a, another healthy home comes from a healthy home. Just like a cell, right? And you start to see that, that when a home is healthy, there are these divisions that happen and we actually get to send out into the world our offspring who can then go and reproduce and recreate that health in a family of their own, right? And so if the body of Christ, if the church is the body of Christ, the home are its cells. I'm gonna just let that sit for a second because I wanna go back to what I was telling you about what I believe about this church. You are the body of Christ. This building is a building. You are the church. You are the body of Christ. And if the, if the church is the body of Christ, the home is its cells. And if the cells aren't healthy, how could we ever expect the body to be healthy? We ask ourselves over and over again, why is the church not being effective in the world today? And I believe it comes back to the challenge of health in the home. That our homes are so unhealthy that we are actually not only not reproducing health, we're actually malignant. You recognize that term? Because that term is what we talk about when cancer comes into the body. Hello? Hello? We talk about the cells being malignant. You know, the root word of the, the, the word malignant is actually align. And if you look at that word, malignant just means misaligned. And when our homes are misaligned, we are not reproducing health. And therefore, how could we ever expect the body to be what God intended, what Christ intended for her to be when he died on the cross, if we are not paying attention to the health of our home? Yeah? Come on, y'all can talk back to me. You don't scare me. I'm all right with it. And so I want to go through a few th quick things here in the next few minutes that I believe are absolutely fundamental to a healthy home. First of all, building upon what Pastor Brian talked about last week, a healthy home starts in the heart. A healthy home starts in the heart. If you take away anything today, and by the way, let me just tell you, I love saying this, note takers or history makers. If you got a phone, a device, a notepad, write some stuff down because you actually will only remember some three or 4% of what I'm saying out loud today. But if you write it down, you're gonna remember it and you're gonna utilize it later. If I can just encourage you with that factoid today. But a healthy home starts in the heart. The thing I want you to take away is that healthy homes don't happen by accident. They don't happen by hope. Ooh, you cannot hope your way into a happy home, a healthy home. You can't. 
And I think we've got this concept that if we hope hard enough and we believe and we put the right live, laugh, love plaque on the wall, then we're going to have a healthy home. A cute saying from Hobby Lobby, a healthy home does not make. I got no problem with it, but I just want to help you understand that it's going to take a level of effort to have a healthy home. And it starts in the heart. You are how your home has health by the grace of God. You are. And the word of God tells us in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Your home is a reflection of your heart. So if you're looking around at your home and you're looking at your marriage and your children or whatever the dynamic of your home is, and you're going, I don't like the condition of this home. I don't like the way that it feels. What you have to realize is it's actually simply an echo of your own heart. If your heart isn't healthy, it is impossible for your home to be healthy. And so it starts inside your heart and you have to guard it. You guard your heart. As Pastor Brian talked about last week, the word of God is absolutely crucial to the condition of your heart. We cannot expect to have health in our bodies if all we eat is Mickey D's. I don't mind pulling through that drive-thru every once in a while, but if it was three meals a day, every day of the week, my body would start to reject me, (laughs) right? My physical body would start being, hey, listen, we need to have a conversation, okay? You're starting to look like a Big Mac. Those are two all-beef patties right there, my friend, walking around. Special sauce, lettuce, cheese. Y'all remember, like, I remember the eight pickles, that's right. I remember that boy when you, they had that. That had like a rhythm and a music to it, and I couldn't wait to go get one. But point is, you are what you eat. Physically, emotionally, spiritually, you got to guard your heart. An unhealthy heart is a heart that's led by the flesh. We have two natures. We have our fallen nature, which is our flesh nature, which is a result of the original sin found in Genesis chapter 3. And then we have a redeemed spirit nature, which was offered to us by the blood of Jesus Christ and his cross and his resurrection. Amen. And we have to decide what we're going to live from. Are we going to live from our flesh Are we going to live from our spirit? A healthy heart is led by the spirit. An unhealthy heart is led by the flesh. I'm going to read this, uh, this, these few verses to you from Galatians chapter five, but I love the way the message renders it because it's kind of, it's kind of just, it just kind of, you know, so here's what it says. Look, it says, it is obvious what kind of life develops out of trying to get your own way all the time. It's already preaching. Listen. (laughs) Uh repetitive, loveless, cheap sex. By the way, this is the Bible. So don't get mad at me. I don't care. Get mad at me. A stinking accumulation of mental and emotional garbage. Frenzied and joyless grabs for happiness. Trinket gods, magic show religion, paranoid loneliness, cutthroat competition, all-consuming yet never satisfied wants, a brutal temper, an impotence to love or be loved, divided homes and divided lives, small-minded and lopsided pursuits, the vicious habit of depersonalizing everyone into a rival, uncontrolled and uncontrollable addictions, ugly parodies of community I could go on. Woo! That is the result of living from our flesh. I think I just gave you the Webster's Dictionary for culture in 2024. 
That's the definition of what we're living in. And the reason that's the definition of what we're living in is we have a bunch of people running around living for themselves, living from their flesh. We as the church have got to be men and women of God that say, I refuse to live by the flesh and instead live by the spirit. Because look, a healthy heart is led by the spirit. Galatians 5 verse 22 says this, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love. You want a home filled with love? Live by the spirit. Joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Our home should be the place that we belly up to the table and eat a big old fruit salad because we're living by the Spirit. A healthy heart is led by the Spirit. An unhealthy heart is led by the flesh. You're all with me? Yeah? We keep going for a few minutes? Amen. Well, we're going to. Didn't matter what your answer was because I got the mic. Okay. Listen. Point number two, a healthy home requires a good influence. Here's what I like about the word influence. A couple things. First thing I like about the word influence is it's actually the same word as as influenza. Do you realize that? It's the same root as influenza, which is where where we get the word flu. So a healthy home is a home that is affected by what you're contagious with. I'm just going to let that simmer for a minute like a stew of truth. Listen, your home is a reflection of what you're contagious with, which is connected to the condition of your heart. I'm I'm hoping that you're starting to see how absolutely critical it is that you take responsibility for your own heart. Pastor Brian is not responsible for your heart. Your your attendance at church on a Sunday morning is not going to do it. You have to take responsibility for the condition of your heart if you want to have a healthy cellular system that God designed. And so a healthy home requires good influence. If you are not allowing yourself to be full of life and vibrancy through the word of God, it it will be impossible for you to be contagious with anything that has health and vibrance in it. And so, you know, listen, I grew up, I grew up in the church It was my saving grace in a home that was crazy. I had the church I could run to. And the church is a part of the nucleic atomic system that God's created for us. I believe that. It's a part of it. And so by the grace of God, I had a church to go to. I had a youth group that was, I couldn't wait to be there. I wasn't a great, perfect Christian kid. But I knew I felt loved there and I felt accepted there. And in that place, I learned, I had leaders, spiritual leaders, just repeating these types of things over and over again. And in my immature brain, I really thought it was like, I just have to do my duty. I got to do my duty. I got to pray every day. I got to read my Bible every day. If I just do my duty, then listen, that's not a bad place to start. But I want you to grasp the intentionality it's going to take for you to have a heart that is healthy to reproduce a home that is healthy. It's going to take an intentionality. You got to press in. You got to be desperate for it. You've got to make sure that you're not breathing in the air of culture constantly. Y'all remember COVID, right? We were all walking around with our masks and doing everything we could to not breathe in because there's an understanding in medical sciences that if something is airborne and we breathe it in, it infects us. The word of God calls Satan the prince of the air. And we have to be really intentional what air we're breathing in because what we breathe in will either infect us with life or it will infect us with death. And that is what we will be contagious with. 
A healthy home requires good influence. The other part of, of, of that word influence that I like is it's, uh, I call him Uncle John, John Maxwell. He's one of the, one of the, the, the fathers of, of leadership leadership books and, and, and has just really transformed in the, in the last 25 years, transformed our understanding of godly Christian leadership. And what he says is that leadership is simply influence. Nothing more, nothing less. And here's what I need you to see. If you want to have a healthy home, you got to lead it that way. If you want to have good influence in your home, you've got to be the one that leads it. Can I talk to the, to the men in the room, the, the, the husbands and the fathers for just a second? The word of God calls you the priest of your home. The condition of your home is 100% your responsibility. It's not your wife's. It's not the pastor's. It is your responsibility as a man and a husband. And it won't happen unless you step up because of God's ordained system and the way he has ordered things, it won't happen unless men of God step up and be who God has called us to be. And we've got to lead our home. You know what that means? That means that we are the ones that are calling the family to prayer together. We are the ones that are calling our spouse to a place of spiritual intimacy with us, being open and vulnerable and being real. And if, if that isn't the way your home is set up, let me tell you, there's a grace on whoever you are and whatever the system of your home is to be the leader of your home. Point is, you've got to lead your home. You've got to lead your home. Leadership requires vision. It's one of the, the, the most basic aspects of leadership. It requires vision. Look at this. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 18. I love it, again, the way the message says that if people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. But when they attend to what he reveals, they are most blessed. As a husband and a father, let me tell you, there's been a lot of seasons where I felt like I was stumbling all over myself. I felt like I could not get heads from tails. Things were just frustrating and I was struggling everywhere I turned. And what I realized by the grace of God is because I wasn't positioning myself to see what God was doing. I was looking at other things. I was looking at my career. I was looking at the finances and the bills. I was looking at the circumstances. I was looking at the challenges and the problems. And God is over here revealing, opening up this perfect plan of prosperity and hope and peace by the way, prosperity, I know that's got a, bad, it's got a bad taste in people's mouths, but listen, it just simply means in the Greek, it just means God moving you from where you are to where he wants you next. That's all that word means. And so he's revealing this plan and he's laid it out. As I can see it almost like he's laid it out on a table like a big map that he's unfolding. He's going, look, James, this, look, this is where you need to go. This is how you need to do it. And I'm going, hold on a second. Do you not realize I got some medical bills that have come due and I don't know how I'm going to pay them? Uh, do, do you not realize I'm trying to, I'm trying to uh, get a good reputation at work so maybe I can get a promotion, maybe I can make a little more? Don't you realize that the kids are running around crazy, slapping each other on the back of the neck, and I got to tell them to shut up and sit down? Don't you realize? He's like, hey, if you'll just look at me, stop looking everywhere else. Stop staring at the problems. And then I'd be so exhausted, church, from running around looking at the problems that I would need to self-medicate. I would heap upon my own lap Problems that I was supposed to cast at the feet of Jesus. And I would be exhausted. And then I would just go, oh, if I could just get a minute. If I could just, I just need to, I need to, I need to, you, never, you know, I need to turn off for a minute. You ever heard that phrase? You ever said that phrase? I just need to turn off for a minute. And what typically happens when we need to turn off for a minute is we're turning something on that starts to feed our soul that actually isn't what God is revealing. You name it. I could name a lot of things that we turn on. I found it interesting that uh, the, the things we carry around 
are called devices. And it actually has within that word the word vice. I'm just going to leave that there for you for a minute. That was good, wasn't it? It was worth the price of admission. We have to look at what God is revealing. My third point, a healthy home is supernatural. A healthy home is supernatural. This is a big one because, well, let me just read it to you. Ephesians chapter 6 says this. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Can I just pause right there for a second? That comma allows me to. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Somebody in the room needs to grab a hold of that truth right now. Your struggle is not against him, and it's not against her, and it's not against them. That's not your struggle. It feels like your struggle because the enemy is deceptive and wicked and wants you to place the target on another person so that you can be a hurt person who hurts people. Victims always become villains. Your struggle is not against flesh and blood, goes on, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Let me let you in on a secret. Satan does not want your home to succeed. Satan does not want your marriage to succeed. Satan does not want you to be the best mom you can be. He does not want you to succeed as a father or a grandfather or a grandmother or a cousin or a friend or any of that. He wants to divide you. He wants to cause you to find loneliness. Some theologians believe that hell, actually the punishment of hell, is eternal loneliness. And we have to understand that the enemy would love to go ahead and start that in our life today. And so he's doing everything he can, church, to come and drive wedges. He will sometimes drive a a, a wedge. He will look to drive a wedge between your very own soul and spirit. So that what you believe about yourself is not what God says about you. And when you start to believe the broken things about yourself that he wants you to believe, you start to live out and act that out. And that is supernatural. We will not find a healthy home by by doing all the right things. There aren't enough articles or self-help books or, or you name it to cause us to act out from the natural anything that is going to help us overcome the attack of the enemy on our home. That's going to require a supernatural plan. We need a supernatural strategy in our home. Because it's not against flesh and blood. I love this and this, this awesome exchange that happened. The Lord showed me this a couple weeks ago and I find it, it keeps coming up in conversation and I think it's really, it's really powerful. Matthew 16 let me read this to you. Verse 16, Simon Peter answered, oh, oh by the way, let me, let, me tell you, let me set this up real quick. Jesus goes to his disciples and he says, hey, who do you say I am? And the disciples started to, they, they started to speak up and say, oh, you're, you're like Elijah. You're a prophet. And out of that, here's what Simon Peter, I like Simon Peter. He's feisty. He said this, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter and on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. In other words, the power of hell will not overcome it. I will listen. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. Here's what this is showing us. We hear this a lot on this rock. I will build my church and the powers of hell will not prevail against it. And this whole exchange has been confused for centuries where where people believe that that Jesus was saying on the, the person of Peter, I'll build my church. 
Well, if we look at the name Peter, it comes from Petra or rock. And then he says, on this rock, those are actually two different words in the Greek. And he says, on this rock, what he's saying is on your revelation of who I am as the son of God, your revelation of who I am as the Christ, your revelation of the gospel is what I will build my church on. But that's just the beginning. Because he goes ahead and he says, so your revelation of who I am, your supernatural connection to me is impenetrable by the powers of hell. I really kind of feel like I need to say that again. Your supernatural, this is what Jesus is saying to you right now. Your supernatural connection to me and who I am is impenetrable by the power of hell. I'm good with that. I'm good with knowing that when I have a supernatural revelation of who Jesus is, there is no weapon that the enemy can form against me that's going to prosper. And some of y'all need to know today that the Lord wants to set you up, set your life, your relationships, your home up to be impenetrable by the powers of hell. Sounds like a good deal to me, but that's not all. Hey, 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 that's not all. He goes on. But wait, there's more. I will give you, y'all still have that up? Put that, will y'all put, thank you. I will give you, y'all ready? I will give you the keys. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. He wants to put in your hand supernatural spiritual authority. This is what this verse is saying. You are not subject to the circumstances of life and the powers of the enemy. Somewhere, at some point, we've taken on this mentality that we're just subject to whatever comes our way. No, let me tell you something, church. It is time for men and women of God to say, I don't think you understand, devil. You hear that? Tingle, 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 tingle. You hear that? I've got the keys, sucker. I've got the keys. So you can tuck your sad little tail and head on back to wherever you came from because I'm walking around with the authority and you gots to go. It's time for you to go. I've got the authority. He goes on and says, I'm talking about the authority to the kingdom of heaven. Do we grasp what is being put in our hand through a revelation of Christ? Spiritual authority. You know what I like about that? That means that we make the rules according to Jesus Christ. I love the word authority has within it the word author. Don't let somebody else write how your home's supposed to look. You write it. Some of y'all need to get a little attitude, a little stank face. This house is going to be in my home. Some of y'all need to go home today and start walking around the perimeter of your home like, like Joshua fit the battle of Jericho. And start saying, this is how this is going to go down. You need to start praying over the, the, the corridors and the doors of your home and say, no, 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 no. This is how this is going to go down. Sickness, you don't have any place here. Addiction, you don't have any place here. Depression, anxiety, you don't belong here. There's nowhere for you to sleep in this house because I done changed the sheets with the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Just preaching a little bit this morning at the bridge. But listen, I love this. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Some of y'all need to go home today and bind some stuff. Can I just say it? I'll just say it. Some of you need to bind some stuff. When you walk in that spiritual authority that is given to you by Christ, and you walk through your home and you say, this is how it's going to be going forward. That's how it's going to be. I'm not telling you that. The word of God is telling you that. And some of y'all need to go into your home today and loose some stuff. Loose the spirit of God. Loose the spirit of freedom. Loose in your home. And listen, this is not some weird thing. It's simply helping you understand that you have the ability to go in your home and write how you want it to be. What do you want gone? 
Tell it to be gone. Whatever you want to be there, invite it to come. Amen? And so, I'm going to leave you with this today. Here's what I believe. Here's what I believe. Oh, by the way, this was cute. But look, I want you to see this. It starts in the heart, H. It requires good influence, I. And it's supernatural. What does that spell? His. A healthy home is his. That was even better than I thought it was going to be. That's easy to remember, isn't it? That's called good teaching. Make it memorable. A healthy home is his. Heart, influence, supernatural. Some of y'all, as I'm, as I'm speaking this to you today, what I'm hoping you're grasping and grabbing hold of is that you are not subject to the nature of this world. You're not subject to culture. I'm so sick of that. I'm so sick of us believing as sons and daughters of the Most High God, we're just subject to culture. Our homes will be what we decide they're going to be in the power of the Most High God. And today there's a decision that you get to make. Maybe some of you in here, it's just deciding that your heart first of all, is where Jesus can set up home. And for others, it's a decision. Okay, okay, I've now heard the truth. I now know what my role and my posture is in this thing. The stank face. Mm, mm. Come on, Jesus. I'm ready. I'm ready for health. I'm sick of being a victim. I'm sick of the fighting. I'm sick of my kids being developed. No, I'm not sick of my kids. That was, that was a bad place. Sometimes, sometimes, it was just a bad place for a pregnant pause. I'm sick of my kids being developed by their environment. I'm taking it back. In the name of Jesus, I'm taking it back. In the name of Jesus, I'm taking my home back. Let me pray for you. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your truth. I thank you, God, that it is by, mm, it's by your stripes that we're healed. I feel somebody needs to hear that right now. That there's healing right now, there's healing. That's, that, that just like me, many people in this room have a family origin or a history of hurt. And God wants to heal you today. He wants to heal you and show you in your heart what he is making possible for your future. Lord, I ask that right now you would cause your word to take such deep root in our heart that we are forever, forever changed. Thank you for your word today in your precious name. Amen, amen, amen. invite everybody to stand with us this morning. If we can pray with you, we want to. And so I'm going to invite our prayer team to come forward. We believe prayer works. We wouldn't do it if we didn't think that it did. We wouldn't make time for it. And I love what Pastor James was just saying right there at the end. There are many of us that our home origin story is rough. And many of us even now, our home story right now is, is challenging. And as Pastor James was, and I know I'm going to reflect his heart here too. I'm not trying to build on top of his message. Many of you that are single moms, you are leading a healthy home to the best of your ability. And it's heavy. We want to pray with you too. Because you have a grace. I love that he said that you, there's a grace to carry that weight. And so if we can pray with you this morning, we want to pray with you and invite you to step forward. Kelly's going to sing. So if you want to uh, receive prayer at your seat, just pray there. Cool. Sing there. Otherwise, go ahead and step out. We'd love to pray with you this morning. Lord, I pray right now that you would do what only you could do. In Jesus name we pray. Amen.
cries at his name. Sickness, darkness, chains, break at the name of Jesus. Everything bows at his name. Everything bows at his name. Sickness, darkness, chains, thank you so much that we are victorious and the reason we are is because of you Lord you have so much love for the home thank you for such an incredible and encouraging word and God I pray that you would allow this word the truth of the Bible to sink in our souls Lord we love you we praise you and we give you glory today in Jesus name amen can you give the Lord praise in this room this morning Well, thank you again for being here. If today's the first time you've been with us, I want to invite you to stop by the starting point right back there. Go meet Kirsty because she's fantastic. We also have a gift for you back there. And you're like, I don't know if I'm ever coming back. At least take the cup. You know what I mean? Like there's a mug. But we would love to have you again with us next weekend. Those are coffee mug back there that we want to give you. It holds more than coffee. It will also hold queso. I have tried that. It works. And so uh, go ahead, grab one of those. There's a communication card right there in front of you. So fill out the part of that. What's going to happen when you fill that out is I'm going to call you this week and invite you back next week. And you're like, I don't want to talk to you. Well, then don't put that part on there. Just put your email and I'll email you. It's easier. Uh, if this weekend is your weekend to tithe or give your offerings, those are separate things as we know here. Uh, you can either do that through the app or in the offering boxes attached to the back wall. Otherwise, tonight is date night. I don't know if you've noticed, James has a little bit of energy. Uh, I can't wait for you to hear Holly. So if you're a part of that, come and be a part of that with us tonight. Can't wait to see you. God bless you. I love you. Next week's family weekend. Bring friends. Love you. See you next week. <laughs>